Hello, welcome to the lesson on dimensional analysis. So today we're going to discuss the process of dimensional analysis. This process is very important in fields like chemistry as it allows us to convert between various units. In chemistry problems, we often have to use dimensional analysis to find an answer to our problems. Before we talk about this, let's touch upon the units and dimensions in general. So dimensions are used to define all physical measurements. This is why your teacher in middle or high school would reinforce that you have to include units for your answers. Uh, for example, they might say that two is not the same as two meters, and this is going to matter for dimensional analysis. So these physical properties can be represented through many different units, like liters and milliliters. There are a number of different categories of measurements, including time, length, and mass. We should also note that a single quantity can only be represented by one unit. For example, the mass of an object can only be expressed in terms of mass units. You cannot express the mass of an object using time, nor can you express the time it takes for a moving object to cross a certain distance in terms of volume. Next, we should discuss compound units. These are units that are represented by a combination of dimensions. Many of these are spoken using blank per blank. An excellent example of this is speed units like miles per hour or kilometers per hour. Some of the units we would use most often in chemistry are velocity, represented by meters per second, molarity, which is representation of concentration, uses moles per liter, and acceleration uses meters per second squared. These units are especially important to consider when we're doing dimensional analysis, as we'll examine in the following slides. Dimensional analysis can be simply explained using algebra with units. This sounds like a weird topic, so let's do a simple example by converting from one week to seconds. If a question asks how many seconds are in one week, this is the process you would use. While you can certainly work through this problem in your head, the process you'd be taking looks like this. One week times seven days per week times 24 hours per day times 60 minutes per hour times 60 seconds per minute. Obviously, multiplication with units is not something that makes sense or that many of us will have worked with during school, so let's make it make a bit more sense. We can represent each unit by a variable, so 1w times 7d over w times 24h over d times 60m over h times 60s over m. In this representation, we can see that cross simplification allows us to cancel out each variable as we multiply. Weeks will cancel out weeks, days cancel out days, and so on. Finally, you're left with one unit, seconds. The multiplication will end up working out to 604,800 seconds. Let's take a look at another example. We'll convert a common measurement of speed, like miles per hour, into a more scientifically useful measurement, like meters per second. This conversion is helpful when working with velocity, since they're usually presented using meters per second. So how do we convert 100 miles per hour to meters per second? Let's have a look at it. First, we have to know that 100 miles per hour is actually 100 miles per hour, and can be written as a fraction like this. Now, let's do our conversions. 100 miles per hour can be converted to feet by multiplying by 5,280 feet per mile. Feet are converted to centimeters by multiplying by 30.48 centimeters per foot. Centimeters can be divided by 100, as there are 100 centimeters in one meter. Now that we've ended up at meters, we can convert our time units. We'll divide by 60 twice, once to convert hours to minutes, and another time to convert minutes to seconds. Once you do the calculations, this works out to 44.07 meters per second. We could have also converted miles to kilometers, and then kilometers to meters, or directly from feet to meters. All of these paths would still lead to the same answer. With, ex with this example, you can see how dimensional analysis allows us to convert between compound units and different measurement systems pretty easily. Dimensional analysis is incredibly useful in chemistry and will continue to be used throughout the course to convert between various units of measurement. Use some of these practice problems to make sure you understand and fully master this concept. In your textbook, you can also find practice problems on this topic in the chapter E review, numbers 61 to 74. You can also do numbers 75 to 80 if you know how to convert between forms of energy, like from calories to kilojoules or kilowatt hours. That's all I have for this video. Thank you.